right, gang, here's another round of not leaving well enough alone because, well, that's what I do. Never happy with just what I come up with. Um, so taking my um, my own Mazda Miata ND2, um, my Neostrip um, LED thing, I'll post that up here. Did for my own car. I actually sell a kit like this as well. Um, but this version I've created for my car has a controller. Um, I'll post some videos about that too, but basically I was, had built it a number of different ways. I started with the lower console with a tiny uh, display, um, but I could barely read that. And, you know, not that I do this stuff when I'm actually driving, but it would have been nicer to have it, you know, a little more information. So I migrated to um, uh, outfitting this guy uh, into uh, a vent unit, the vent um, uh, right beside the, to the right side of the steering wheel. I'm using a Lilygo TRGB unit, um, uh, which was really good. I'm really impressed with this unit. The only issue I have with it is I've had two now and both have failed. Um, I don't want to get into too much in this video, but both have failed on where the um, the lighting uh, um, pins are. Not the pins, but the where this, this um, power strip and, and data strip a ribbon ah that's it the ribbon cable meets the um display unit uh it's had a failure i i couldn't tell because it's so fine and i can't really get in there but where i think it's coming separated from um the the main board uh the driver for the um uh, the led light the backlight so everything works great but the damn backlight fails um so they've been cutting up the semi replacement but uh, i just think that there's a bit of a design flaw in this it's too much stretch on this this thing and getting it perfect um you know is is different now that said i wouldn't suggest they're all failing because uh, at least for the first unit i was doing a heck of a lot of testing over months and i had it exposed like this so i've since been doing more testing with i, I inserted it to the foam unit you know, they provide just to stop that area from getting abused anyway that's not what this is about so um in the other videos you probably have seen maybe already but i basically had 3d printed a vent mount unit uh, this was the previous unit that held that uh, TRGB display um, and I've modified that a bit to fit this new display which I'm going to talk about. Uh, the Makerfabs MA Touch 2.1 inch round touch display with a rotary encoder which is actually I'm pretty damn sure the exact same um, uh, display driver display and driver plus there are both ESP2 32 C3s I believe uh, driving them which is really good because I didn't have to do much modification to the code. Um, but again, I'll get rid of this in a second, but uh, this is partially printed. I'm gonna print the lower part here and then glue it together with this. I had to do this one in pieces. Um, but just to give you an idea of what this is, looks like, the idea is that um, this actually just pressure fits into the, to, to the vent mount. Um, uh, in this case, it's actually gonna be built to totally block the air flow. Uh, previously, I had this one flowing air around the very outside of the um uh, of this guy but uh, it really didn't do much and i found i don't really need to have it anyway um so this one's just going to be blocked the idea here is that um and i'll take this out to show you a demo of it but you know i will mount pressure fit this in it sticks out a bit don't really mind um it is a push button display too so it needed room to actually allow it to do the push button um and obviously it's a it's a rotary display too so um, that's that. I'll show you that really quickly inside. I'm gonna remove the guts. So that's just a look inside the actual um, unit. We'll just slide in the bottom there and I'll um, uh, probably just lightly glue it in place with the shoe goo. Um, that'll hold it there. So that's that. Now the guess to resist on. So this is essentially the same thing. Um, Heard my previous videos got an RTC clock and an accelerometer uh, that I may or may not use, but the idea here is to just give some, you know, allow me to do some fun graphics with um, and my previous one. I had a, a dot that would like a little donut that would move on the screen depending on the G forces like the car's going through when I'm driving in my local streets doing <laughs> 50 kilometers per hour. No, we have some fun roads up here that uh, you can push the, the corners on. So, anyway, without further um ado uh let me show you what this guy is all about i plug it in here 
Let's do that again so you can actually see it start up properly. So the um, lots of interfaces with this one because it's got to get a push button, it's got a rotary encoder, plus it's got a touch screen. So um, I can use the rotary encoder to change my main screens. So I can shift between uh, this, just change the settings on the uh, different items like the clock settings, and then I can change the font of the clock. Um, I can save those settings to EEPROM, so it boots up that way next time. I also have a combination for daylight savings time in there. Um, this just because this is the master of the slave, which is in the trunk. That's the Neo Neo Luminate that I sell. Um, this just shows me the status of the connection and make sure it's connected. Gives me an idea of what sequence um, that it's going to play. Um, again, connected state uh, and then the MAC and address of this and the slave address because these both use ESP now to communicate. Um, so really simple display here. It's really just showing a clock, uh, the, 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 the square boxes. That just shows when I've initiated uh, or the car starting up, it'll show the playing state of, of uh, the Neo strip in the back. And then this, these are the different, mo uh, all the different possible um, sequences. So if I push once, I can navigate through the different sequences. Sorry, I can't sure if you see that, but the different sequences that are available. And if I push and hold, it'll send the sequence. In this case, it's not connected um, to the, there's no slave right now. The car is not powered up and um, this can't talk to it. So it's failing to communicate the change. So it just says, no go, dude. Um, anyway, so that's just some simple stuff. I can also use the touch screen to communicate a, a change. Um, I can navigate the touch screen. So to get out of this mode of, of this, just hold it down again and I'm back in this mode. The only one thing I wanted to show you was um, the rotary encoder. You get it, try to initiate it here. Now it doesn't want to do it, of course. I just had a, this is just a test screen that I had. Shown the rotary encoder. The way they, they built this, and, and I'm hoping I can fix this in software, but there's essentially two clicks. Like you can, you can barely hear this, but There's actually supposed to be two clicks every time you, sorry, two ticks on the encoder every time you hear a click. So it's got a, a mechanical um, detent in there, but it doesn't always count the right amount. So sometimes it counts by two, sometimes it counts by one, which kind of wreaks havoc on screen navigation or whatnot. So um, I'm gonna play around that a bit more. Uh, it's, it's a bit annoying um, that can't you know they hadn't had maybe more testing on that to get that more accurate and maybe even built provided a software um you know um what do you call it anyway a software um update or an example that filters out or can manage this because it's a bit annoying because ideally i want each d10 to be one that's really what i care for anyway um just to give you an idea in case you haven't seen this but there i'll give you i'll show you the, the throw that the actual push button has it's about i'd say two millimeters um uh, spacing required to allow for it to fully click um and just not get into too much technical because there's a million videos out there of like everybody buys one of these things and they do the same thing over and over again and this has got this blah, blah, blah. anyway it's out there so just search for it but basically USB-C it's got um, um, uh, an I2C connector I believe and uh, one is a UART connector uh, I'm using the I2C connector I squared C um, to connect these peripherals um, I don't really need to have this guy um, and they provide you um, uh, I think two, one or two of these, which is great because these uh, these guys are, I think they're 1.5 millimeter pitch. Uh, hard to come by. I'm always finding myself ordering 10 packs of these things every time um, uh, I buy something new to make sure I have spares. Um, anyway, love these ESP32s, uh, the S S C3s. <coughs> um, very versatile, lots of memory. Um, only thing I have, the only knock against I have against Maker Fabs is that their support is not, well, it's non-existent. Um, I've had a number of requests out to them. I've got to ask on GitHub about memory. Uh, I can't. I'm using Platform IO, and it should be 16 megabytes uh, available in in memory. That that, as I understand it, but only I'm only able to use the um, 
the eight gigabyte default um, partition table, uh, which is fine so far for my graphics that I use, but uh, and fonts because uh, I everything I have is graphic based here, very little text. Um, but um, uh, sorry, my fonts aren't graphics, but they're generated as um, uh, graphic files or image files um, converted, basically, not just uh, simple fonts. Anyway, um, trying to figure out how to get the, the same, I had the same thing working. I know it'll work because the, this TRGB is the exact same device. And I have the 16 megabyte working on this one and this should work on this one. Anyway, their support has not even responded to the request. So MakerFabs, if you're watching this, listen to your customers, right? Um, it'll get you bonus points. So. I recommend this device, but I recommend it with caution because uh, they don't seem to have heavy a heavy support or community around support that I'm aware of. So maybe that's building, but um, uh, they don't do as well as others out there. So just caution against that. Anyway, um, there you have it.